Hey guys, it's Luke back on Sean's channel. Uh, this is the Runic uh, deck pro I've been uh, leading up to. This is my take on Runics. Uh, this is the deck that I take to locals, the deck I play online a lot. It's just my take on Runic. It's not the conventional way to play them, but I'm going to showcase uh, my ideas behind the deck. I'll be showcasing the main deck, the uh, extra deck, and also the side deck I take to locals as well. So yeah, let's not beat around the bush. Let's just get into it. Okay, we're in Kashtira format because, you know, that deck is just cracked as fuck, so we need to find a way to sort of combat that. So, of course, uh, three copies of Nibiru in the main deck, I feel, is just really important, especially with this format, just because Kashtira is just dominating so fucking much right now, uh, that Nibiru is kind of like one of the perfect counters uh, just to handle it, because uh, they can go get through a lot of... Uh, uh, negates if you like main deck ash or ghost or whatever or effect bear uh, imperm doesn't matter because Tira can still play through them because it's just one small interrupt however uh, going with Nibiru the fact that it's like completely wipes the field on uh, their uh, end of main I feel is a really good way to sort of combat the deck and also Nibiru is very good against all other decks in the format so Nibiru running at three in the main deck is definitely no harm whatsoever. Last of the monsters, of course, we're playing Runic, so we don't play that many monsters at all. We also run Lava Golem. Lava Golem is very, very good. Uh, it goes hand in hand with the Messenger piece we run in this deck. Uh, Lava Golem, you special summon to your opponent's side of the field by tri uh, tributing two of their monsters, and then uh, during each of their standby phases, uh, the controlled carry takes 1000 damage. So Lava Golem is a good way to sort of get rid of two problematic monsters your opponent may have and just keep this guy on their side of the field for them to take damage and then 8 turns you win. That's one of the win cons of this deck which I feel is very very good. Uh, be very careful when you're bringing out Lava Golem because sometimes either if you don't have a way to fend off against it or even a way to destroy it. Lava Golem is still a big boy with 3000 attacks so make sure your opponent doesn't use it to uh, their advantage too much. But yeah, tree lava going with the main deck. This can be sided out depending on uh, what the matchup is, but we'll kind of get into that a little bit more later. But I think uh, those are the essential monsters you want in the main deck. We're not running too many uh, hand traps because uh, with Runic Fountain up, all of your Runic uh, cards uh, can be activated during your opponent's turn. So uh, that's that's pretty much the extent of all the monsters you want to see in this main deck right here. We'll talk about the good variants in the side deck a little bit later. Now Runic Fountain. Of course, we run three copies of this. I see a lot of people, no matter what the profile, if it's uh, Naturia Runic, if it's, uh, well, not Pure Runic, it's Naturia Runic, if it's Sky Striker Runic, a lot of them just run Runic Fountain at two, but just judging on this build, Runic Fountain needs to be at three. So you can actually run a quick play spell cards from your hand while uh, during your opponent's turn while Runic Fountain is faced up on the field. And then once per turn, if you activate a run a quick play spell card, you can target up to three run a quick play spells in your graveyard, uh, place them at the bottom of your deck in any order, then draw the same number of cards. So up to three, so drawing three is just fucking amazing. Uh, just give a quick example of how this card works. Let's just say run a fountain is up on the field, uh, it's in the field zone, and say we're already a little bit in the turn, so we have run a tip and freezing curses in the graveyard. Well, Runic uh, Fountain basically does say if we activate another uh, Runic Quick Play spell, it's just a flashing fire, and then that resolves, it goes to the graveyard. What we can do is use Runic Fountain, target those three in the graveyard, place them at the bottom of the deck in any order, then just draw three cards. That's basically the sort of gimmick of Runic. That's sort of like the gimmick of Runic uh, overall. So that's why I think running three copies of Runic Fountain is very, very important. You want that tree because we also run Desires in this deck, so losing. Uh, or fountains is never a good thing, so definitely run a Runic Fountain at 3. We have 3 copies of Runic Tip. Now let me tell you about the Runic uh, Quick Play spells. They all have uh, their uh, primary effect, which is no matter what, it's either going to be uh, searching, such as what Tip does, uh, uh, it could be a negate, it can be a pop, whatever, uh, and then banish cards uh, equal to the number uh, of it specified on the card itself. One thing I will say, just so I'm not repeating myself over and over again, is all the Runic Quick Play spells uh, have the effect that you can actually just special summon a Runic monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone. So that's what every single one of them do. So you can uh, bring out uh, either your, like, any of your uh, uh, Runic monsters from the extra deck, such as, like, Hoogan or whatever, who uh, in themselves have a very powerful effect. So just keep that in mind, every single one of these uh, Runic Quick Play spells can bring out a Runic monster from the extra deck. Uh, so 
I'm just going to be going over what each run of cards primary effect is uh, as we go on. But please keep in mind that uh, the effect I'm specifying is not their uh, only effect. So Runic Tip is a searcher. You can add one Runic card from your deck to your hand, except Runic Tip, then banish the top card of your opponent's deck. Another thing, uh, as you probably already know since you're watching this video, is that Runics, like one of their main win conditions is just milling your opponent out. So uh, when you resolve all of their primary effects of the quick play spells, uh, you mill uh, your opponent for a certain amount of cards to try and deck them out as quickly as possible. We run three copies of Freezing Curses. Freezing Curses uh, is target one effect monster pawn controls and negates effects until the end of this turn to banish top three cards of your opponent's deck. Trio of Flashing Fire. Flashing Fire is you can target one special summon monster your opponent controls, destroy it, then banish top two cards of your opponent's deck. Runic Slumber. What this card does is you can target one face up monster in the field. The next time that monster will be destroyed, battle or card effect, it is not destroyed. Also, it cannot attack this turn. And then uh, when that resolves, you can banish top three cards of your opponent's deck. My favorite, Runic uh, Destruction. Uh, it's uh, target one spell slash trap your opponent controls, destroy it, then you can banish top four cards of your opponent's deck. I love this card a lot because, it, of course, it banishes top four cards, which is just a lot to get through of your opponent's deck. But also the fact that it doesn't necessarily need to be a set spell or trap, like uh, some other cards like Jamming Ways might lock you into. Uh, it can just be any uh, spell slash trap. So you can actually chain this to stuff like Branded Fusion or whatever. Any spell your uh, opponent activates, just chain uh, run Destruction to mill them out. It's really good if it's, they're activating a Searcher, especially later in the game when they're kind of like low on uh, uh, resources in their deck. If they activate a Searcher and then you chain Run Destruction, Run Destruction will banish uh, top four cards to their deck and then hopefully the card that they want to be searching for actually gets banished off that so then the effects can't resolve. One copy of Smithing Storm, you can banish cards from the top of your opponent's deck up to the number of cards they control. Or you're under one copy of that and also one copy of uh, Runic Golden Droplet. Uh, your opponent draws one card, then banish top four cards of your opponent's deck. So depending on the game state, you mightn't uh, think that these are good, but just remember all these Runic Quick Play spells uh, have the secondary effect that you can special summon one Runic monster from your extra deck. That does it for all the Runic specific spells that we run in the main deck, now let's go on to uh, a little bit of the add-ons. Three copies of Messenger of Peace. Messenger of Peace is a great floodgate. Uh, Messenger of Peace uh, says that monster with 1500 or more attack can have to clear an attack. Now once per turn during your standby phase, pay 100 life points or destroy this card, which isn't a mandatory cause. You can just pay 100 life points or you can choose not to. Messenger Peace comes in clutch as well when you uh, have Lava Golem on your opponent's side of the field. So they can't attack with the Lava Golem and Ender's being burned uh, by a thousand uh, for each of their standby phases. Getting into the draw power of this deck, uh, I know a lot of people in like the, f the pure builds, they use uh, probably like two dualities, two desires and one card demise. I kind of cut it down. I feel like uh, this deck is very consistent in itself. So I only run two copies of Pot of Desires. Uh, it's a limited card anyway, so we, only ha we can only run it at two. Uh, but Pot of Desires is good to get a draw power. And the fact that we run so many trios in the deck, banishing top 10 cards uh, over deck face down isn't too much of a problem. Drawing two is just too good to pass up with this deck. Rounding off the spells, we run two copies of Super Poly. Super Poly is just so fucking good, and I have a lot of targets in uh, the extra deck uh, to show off why Super Poly is so good for this deck. That rounds off all the spells, so we're going into the traps now. We run three copies of There Can Be Only One. Uh, this can be cited out depending on the matchup. I know There Can Be Only One isn't amazing against stuff like Branded or whatever. But uh, it's still really, really good uh, because each player can only control one monster of each type. And if a player controls two or more monsters of the same type, they must send uh, to the graveyard uh, one of those monsters they control, only one of that monster type. So this can be very devastating depending on what your opponent's playing. It's good against a lot of decks, but uh, please keep in mind, depending on the matchup, this might need to be sided out. I run two copies of Solemn Strike. Solemn Strike is just very good because it's a counter trap. Uh, so unless your opponent has a counter trap, they can't counter this. Uh, it's just when a monster will be special summoned or a monster effect will be activated, pay 1500 light points and negate the summon or activation if you do destroy the card. So this can be very good at just negating uh, special summons. Uh, so most of like monsters can't really get their effects. I think strike is better than judgment just because uh, 1500 light points isn't a, an overly big thing to be paying. Uh, so I think uh, just Psalm Strike is uh, definitely the, the better one to be going for. Rounding off the main deck, we run two copies of Dimensional Barrier. Dimensional Barrier is very good, just to clear one monster card type. If it's Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, or Pendulum, and then for the rest of the turn, neither player can special summon 
uh, monsters of that type uh, for the rest of the turn and also monsters of that type on the field, uh, their effects are negated. So dimensional barrier can be very devastating depending on the matchup. It would be great calling Xyz against Kashtira, so running at 2 in the main deck is definitely very good. If you're going against a link deck, of course, you need to uh, probably side it out. But uh, 2 in the main deck is definitely good, especially when you're going first. Which we strive to do playing Runic. Before we go into the, like, the Runic uh, uh, extra deck monsters, I'm going to breeze through like, a bunch of these cards that you already know in the extra deck. One copy of Phoenix, one copy of Unicorn, one copy of Cerberus. Uh, for discarding of a card, this is Pop a Spell or Trap. This is Shuffle One Card uh, on the deck into the field. Uh, shuffle One Card into the field into the deck. And then Cerberus is just target one special zone monster and destroy it. But it needs to be monster main monster zone. But you guys already know what these guys do, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, one of each copy of them. I run one copy of Link Rebo, kind of unconventional because we don't run any level 1s in this deck. However, if we get uh, Dark Angel locked or if we get uh, Lost World or something like that, it's good just to have uh, Link Rebo, just sort of Link fodder. It's great to have uh, Link Rebo in the extra deck. We have the space for him, so might as well. One copy of Lina and one copy of Dark. Uh, we have Dark monsters. Uh, we have Dark. Uh, Runic monsters in the extra deck, so we have no problem bringing out Dark, and the main uh, Runic monsters in the extra deck are Light, so Line is no problem to bring out either. Good way to steal uh, your opponent's uh, monsters that are in their graveyard, kind of go in for uh, good big attacks. Super poly targets now, we have Mud Dragon of the Swamp, we have Goraria, and we also have Star and Venom Fusion Dragon. Star and Venom Fusion Dragon is two Dark monsters that are on the field. Uh, Goraria uh, is two monsters with the same type and attribute but different names. And Mud Dragon of Swamp is two monsters with the same attribute but different types. I know Starving Venom is very good because he, you can actually, uh, he can gain the attack of another special summon monster on the field, so he can get up to a ridiculous attack, but be careful because a lot of the Runic uh, quick play spells, when you activate them, you can't conduct your battle phase this turn, so just be careful when you're bringing out Starving Venom Fusion. Uh, Gararia, I feel, is just very, very good. Also, it has a, another purpose that if we're going against a Dogmatica, deck and they activate like Dogmatica Maximus where we have to send a card from our extra deck to the grave. Uh, Graria when it's sent to the graveyard we get to draw a card. Mud Dragon of the Swamp is just very universal because there's a lot of uh, decks that have uh, monsters with uh, different types but the same attribute like Kashtira could be for one of them. Uh, so Mud Dragon of the Swamp is very good just wiping away two monsters that could be problematic that your opponent controls. Let's round things off with the uh, Runic uh, monsters that we run the extra deck. Two copies of Hujin. Hujin is very good because when she's brought out you can discard a card, uh, search one uh, Runic Fountain from your deck and add it to your hand. Uh, also Hujin, if she's destroyed by Battler card effect sent to the graveyard, you can just return to the extra deck. And also, if another card that uh, we control be a spike card effect, you can actually banish Hujin to negate that effect instead. So Hujin's a very good uh, way of kind of like uh, protecting your floodgates, and also it's a good way to search a Relic Fountain. Two copies of Moonin, so uh, like all the other uh, decks I profiled, I'm just going to be repeating myself again with Moonin. Her primary effect doesn't matter because we do not run Runic Allure. But the secondary effect, which uh, during each end phase, uh, we gain a thousand life points if Moonin's on the field. Which is really good at just uh, either uh, trying to win for time. It's very good if you are kind of low on life points after paying for uh, strikes or whatever. Uh, just kind of up your life points uh, and also the fact that it has 2000 defense is very good at just keeping on the field. We have one copy of Runic uh, Guri to Runic Fangs. So he can't be destroyed by card effects and also if he's special summoned from the extra deck you can target one non quick play Runic uh, card in the graveyard and add it to your hand which is a good way to kind of like recycle a uh, Runic Fountain. Uh, also has the effect that when this card is destroyed by battle, you can tire one card in the field and destroy it. Finally, uh, probably the uh, guy I use the least is uh, Freki. Although he's very, very good, uh, having a 2000 defense monster that you can just bring out is uh, pretty good, but uh, when an attack is involved uh, with this uh, monster in the extra monster zone, you can banish top two cards of your opponent's deck. Uh, neither player takes any battle damage from uh, attacks involving this card. And if this card in the field will be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can tire one run a quick play spell in the graveyard and add it to your hand. So it's decent, however, just uh, based on the amount of matches that I've played and the way things go a lot of times, I just don't use Freki, but still it'll be safe and sorry to run him at one. Let's talk side deck now. It feels so weird putting Ash in the side deck. But uh, honestly, it doesn't need to be main decked as much as it did in other formats. But the reason why I have it in the side deck is in case I'm going against Branded. And Ash can be really devastating to Branded. It can negate their Branded fusion. 
So uh, three copies of Ash in the uh, in the side deck, I think is very very good. Ash Blossom is definitely the most universal hand trap, so it kind of feels weird not being uh, like main decking this. But just depending on situation, as I said earlier in the video, Kashtera can play through Ash anyways. So if this was going to be like really, really up there with meta contention, Ash in the side deck is just the place where it needs to be. Speaking of Cash Terra, we run three copies of Chaos Hunter. So when your opponent special summons a monster, uh, you can discard one card, special summon this card from your hand, and then your opponent cannot banish cards. So it stops your opponent from banishing cards, which Cash Terra does a lot, but it doesn't stop you from banishing cards from the top of your opponent's deck. So Chaos Hunter does go very well hand hand with Runix. Also run uh, three copies of uh, Majesty Fiend in the side deck. Fiend is very good, can be devastating to a lot of decks because it shuts down uh, players from activating monster effects. So depending on the matchup, you can probably like get rid of uh, Lava Golem or Nibiru and side in uh, Majesty's Fiend. He's easy enough to bring out because a lot of your uh, Runic quick play spells special summon a uh, Runic monster from your extra deck, which then you can just use as Tribute Fodder for Majesty's Fiend. If your opponent is playing a sort of graveyard heavy deck, Dimensional Fisher is a good side deck option. Uh, it's just a continuous spell to any monster sent to the graveyard is banished instead. Now, you guys know my relationship with the deck Labyrinths. I'm not good at playing against them, so three copies of Royal Decree in the side. Uh, I feel it's very good because it shuts down Labyrinths altogether. Just negate all other trap effects on the field when you flip up Royal Decree. Not necessarily essential, but I just play against so many Labyrinth uh, decks now that I feel like Royal Decree is definitely uh, a very good contender for a side option. So I 100% recommend playing in the side. So that about does it for the profile. Please let me know what you think. Uh, there's so many other ways to play Runic. I've uh, profiled uh, two other ways, just Runic Pure and Sky Striker Runic. Uh, on the channel already, so feel free to check those out. I might do, there's a few other uh, run variations that interest me a lot, so I might actually uh, see if I can build and profile them as well. But this is by far my favorite uh, option of Runic to play. Uh, this is the one I'm definitely going to be taking to locals, the one I play online a lot, and definitely just my favorite variant of the deck. Please let me know what you think, I'd like to hear your input. Uh, remember to like and subscribe, and check out the other videos. We'll see you soon.